Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a good Friday night. It is October 23rd, and yeah, so today I am back um, with another weather video course. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about severe weather and the upcoming winter storm. Uh, so yes, please subscribe, I would really appreciate it, and yeah, let's get started. Um, so, today we did have a decent severe weather event. We had a slight risk in place for areas of, areas of Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio, as you guys can see. It's got pushed a little bit further to the east, though, due to the cold front advancing further. Um, and we have a marginal all the way down to the south for areas like northern Mississippi and northwestern Alabama and eastern Arkansas. Um, and yeah, so today we did actually have a tornado threat. We had a, we had a 5% earlier for this area. It, 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 got, got, it got downgraded to a 2% um, with the 4 p.m. update, though. Uh, the 9 p.m. update, or the, the new SBC outlook is coming out in 30 minutes. Um... So yeah, it's probably gonna, the slight's probably gonna, could disappear, and it's probably gonna be pushed further east. Uh, we did have a 15% for wind and hail today, so that's why we had our slight risk. We had a slight risk for wind, hail, and tornadoes today. So, we had all modes today for severe weather. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if we actually, let's take a look at the reports real quick. Or first, let's look at the day two. Um, and yeah, so tomorrow we're not, the SBC is not expecting severe weather. But I would not be surprised if one storm in the southeast goes severe. Um, there's going to be a lot of pulse storms across states like Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida tomorrow. Um, and normally in the summertime, those go a few of those go severe like every day. Um, so, so we'll have to see uh, what happens tomorrow because this is a little bit. We don't have as much instability in the southeast as we normally do in the summer. So as much storms probably are not going to go severe. We're probably not going to have as much coverage as we normally do in the summer. But I wouldn't be surprised if one or two does go severe tomorrow. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the storm reports for the day. Today's been a pretty active day. We've had hail reports all the way down in northwestern Tennessee, wind all the way down. We had a wind report kind of by Fort Worth and a few wind reports by Houston. And we've had no tornado reports, but so far today we've had 52 reports. So that is pretty good. Uh, we've had 12 hail, and wind has been a main threat today um, with some hail. So that's pretty good. Um, yesterday, we had our slight risk. Yesterday busted. As you guys can see, we only had four hail reports, so not really. That was not a slight risk. I don't even think we had much. I don't even. I don't even know if we had a severe warning issue yesterday. I don't even. I don't think we. I actually don't think we did. I think we just had. What are these reports for? Quarter size. Yeah, quarter size. Oh so yeah, that's 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 enough for a severe warning. But so yeah, that's enough for a severe warning. Um. See, so yeah, yesterday kind of busted, but today definitely. Today did not, probably. Um, I think we're going to have more reports coming in um, soon. Uh, but yeah, so that's the severe weather. We're not going to be doing a lot of forecasting for that today. Let's move on to the tropics. We have the Hurricane Epsilon. Bermuda is right there. It's past Bermuda. has 85 mile per hour winds and a minimum central pressure of 968 millibars now. Um, that is going off into this area. And then we have an invest right here. Now let's click on the five-day tropical or graphical tropical weather outlook. Uh, so we can see that the National Hurricane Center thinks it's going to form kind of on the west side of Cuba. That's the east of Cancun. Um, so they have a 70% chance of this forming. And so yeah, we're, we're actually going to be looking at that a little bit today and seeing what models have this forming. Uh, now let's look at Epsilon real quick. Um, and so Orgas has to make a, a sharp northeast turn and move off towards the northeast. Um, and the wind field is pretty big. It has shrunk a little bit. It's no longer the size of, like, all of New England. It's now just the size of, it's now probably just the size of Indiana, Ohio, and Northern Kentucky. Um, and a little bit of western PA, probably. Uh, so, yeah, it's not really going to be affecting many people. Uh, wind speed probabilities, yeah, no Point barely affecting anybody. Uh, so yeah, that is Epsilon. We're going to be watching that in the upcoming days, though. Um, we're just going to be taught. We're not going to really be paying much attention to it. We'll just have a little update. Uh, now let's talk about uh, our next invest. Um, so let's go to the Western Atlantic here. That is our next invest right there. This is Epsilon on the GFS model. Um, this is just one model, so don't take this for everything. Um, so the GFS is this this invest moving north pretty slowly. It has it looks like it has it getting sucked into something and moving northeast. And then something. It, has, it looks like it has it splitting. 
or just has some another invest form right next to it. Um, but it has something going into the Atlantic and forming kind of right by Bermuda, as you guys can see right there, is that. And then over here, it has something trying to form in the, the Gulf of Mexico. And so we're going to have to keep an eye on that, though. The Gulf is pretty warm still. Um, it's enough to support tropical activity in most areas. Um, so yeah, it's going to move northeast and bring some rain to the southeast if this does happen. Now the GFS has been really inconsistent. It has been consistent though with the upper level low in Texas. For the past like, six model months, it's been consistent with that upper level low in Texas. Um, and that kind of collides with this. It makes maybe some flooding in the southeast. Uh, so you're allowed to keep an eye on it. That'll happen next, kind of late next week. And that'll bring cooler, drier air for the southeast, finally. Um, and for the southeast mainly, because Texas is going to get cooler, dry air from a Arctic cold front early next week. Um, which is our winter storm, which we're going to be talking about in a second. Uh, so that's the tropics. Uh, now we're going to go talk about our winter storm. I did not mean to take a sound in. So let's go up to the con us let's get take a look at the uh, our winter storm here so this is after precipitate not rain frozen all right here we go so well right now our winter storm is starting to come to washington oregon and montana and that's going to be blasting southeastward so you guys can see by tomorrow at this time tomorrow it'll be affecting areas like wyoming northwestern nebraska south dakota that's going to move southeast, bring some other states like Kansas, maybe the Panhandle of Texas, and a lot of Oklahoma, and Missouri, and Illinois, and Iowa. So it's going to be a pretty big winter storm, as you guys can see right there. Not big. Well, yeah, it's going to, it's going to be affecting a very large area, and there's going to be very cold air. Record-breaking cold behind this. And uh, so, yeah. Now let's take a look at actual snowfall totals with that. And we could be seeing a little northeast winter storm also after that. We'll have to see. Not really a winter storm, but some snow in the northeast. Uh, so, yeah, now let's take a look at the uh, total, total accumulated. Or let's take a look at the total accumulated snowfall, yeah. So, this system, the GFS is having has 7 inches in Texas, which I don't think is going to happen. But it has a widespread 1 to 5 inches for pretty much all the way down from Montana down to Texas and localized amounts of half a foot plus. Um, it has a lot of those pockets of half a foot plus. It's kind of hard to tell exactly where those are going to be at the size of this winter storm. But right now, GFS is consistent on northern Nebraska and southern South Dakota. And it has some stronger bands in Texas. Before, it had a lot of, a lot more snow for Oklahoma City. Almost like a foot in Oklahoma City, which is pr probably not going to happen. Um, so yeah, now the Canadian model, let's take a look at that. Canadian does not have the snow making it as far south. It has about four inches for areas like Kansas City, around the, what, one to five for Omaha. And still has that pocket in northern Nebraska, though, so that could be a spot where you have to watch for very heavy snow and very, a lot of accumulation. Uh, so, yeah, now, let's take a look at what the European model is thinking, lastly. So, as our winter storm blasting southeast, sort of has... What well, looks to be, so we have a very strong high pressure sitting up in Colorado, bringing the cold air down south. It has an ice storm, kind of like the GFS, it has multiple rounds though, which won't be good. Um, and then maybe I could have a severe weather event in store for Dixie. Uh, so yeah, I'll have to see, guys, that looks kind of weird right there uh, on October 30th. And that's going to, and then we're going to have nice cool air behind this for pretty much the whole east and central U.S. Nothing barely any rain in the whole u.s on the european model <coughs> on halloween night excuse me sorry <coughs> sorry so yeah that is pretty impressive <coughs> i'm sorry about that but uh yeah so let's take a look at total accumulated snowfall <coughs> oh my gosh i can't swallow all right so the european has uh, quite a lot of it now, uh, ignore these amounts in Texas. Maybe not in the Panhandle. It's a lot of snow, though. But keep in mind that the European also has this little pocket of snow, heavy snow, in northern Nebraska. It has a little bit further to the south, but it is still there, so that could be a trend we're going to have to look at. And yeah, it has a lot, a decent amount of snow for it. 
doesn't have Kansas City getting much, just probably a trace. But to the north of Kansas City, it has a lot more snow. It has the it's like four and five inches in northeastern Kansas, but Kansas City you're getting a trace. Um, in Chicago, it almost has you getting a little bit of snow. It's yeah, it's gonna be the first snow for a lot of areas. But I'll wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing. I'll be back tomorrow. But yes, bye.